Yeah, well, so today, guys, we're going to come at you with uh, another topic. We've, um, for those just tuning in now, we've been trying to hit topics, um, new topics once a week. They're shows that run for about 25, 30 minutes, so we don't want to bombard you with information, but we just feel that hitting a topic a week, um, depending on what you're moving through, what you're into, you know, certain pain points, it's just going to give you the deep dive, um, you know, coinciding with as much as Paul and I know about these things and um, having experience in coaching and counseling and and CrossFit and personal training and, and all the other weird ways that we, uh, we have uh, used this time on earth. But uh, today is all about sleep. And this is a you know what, Paulie, I was actually about to say this is an overlooked topic, but would you agree that it's actually now starting to get a little bit of momentum? People are starting to move away from that kind of hustle culture grind and tune into what their, their body's needs are? It's interesting uh, that you say that because I actually believe that in our circles, perhaps uh, it is something that is definitely being drawn to the surface and people are uh, are understanding and appreciating it as the science comes to the surface. But I would say uh, in the general populace, it's still very much an I'll sleep when I'm dead type of philosophy. Yeah. You know? um, being busy, um, waking up early, going to sleep late, burning the candle at both ends. Um, there's not a great appreciation for what, the benefits are associated with sleep, both mm -hmm. mentally, physically, and emotionally. Like the science is pretty much um, very resolute in that. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, I, I just remember, um, I remember reading uh, in one of Johan Hari's books how there's, so there are a couple of different depression scales that you kind of measure the severity of depression. If you, you know, you move closer towards suicidal ideation. Um, there's like the DAS, there's the K10, um, I can't remember exactly which scale it is, but I certainly know that as a difference between antidepressants, and there's obviously a place for antidepressants, but as a difference, a general measure of the effectiveness of antidepressants on depression in comparison to a good night's sleep, the, the antidepressants are worth about 1.5 uh, on that scale. So mm. if you're a 52, um, you know, getting down is, is good because we want you strongly not considering suicide um, and, um, and doing whatever we can. But a good night's sleep is worth about six points, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, intuitively we know that, you know? No, m many people don't know that. M many mm. people don't appreciate what, what actually goes on inside mm. your brain and your body when you are sleeping, you know? There's a lot of people out there that that believe that um the the less um from a biological standpoint the less necessary part of our um sleep wake cycle is the wake cycle like <laughs> what, what you know but in terms of evolution it's like why are we awake yeah exactly <laughs> exactly totally uh, which is which is something interesting to to consider but obviously not to uh, not to practice uh, on a 24 hour cycle, yeah. but you can, bravo too. But, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's amazing. And what I thought would be really, really great is to just have a think about, you know, what, what the ramifications are um, of lacking sleep. And I know what you, you've discussed it and touched on it briefly. Depression is a, you know, a relatively um, big deal. Sure. And, you know, to, to add to that, you have, uh, significant, significantly higher chances of heart attacks and cardiac arrest, strokes, diabetes, mm. um, weight gain, you know, the hormones associated with hunger being leptin and ghrelin are mm. regulated in your sleeping uh, cycle. So when you have disrupted sleep or you uh, are in a state where you're having minimal sleep, either during, you know, the start um, of your sleep or, or, or towards the end, that is going to severely disrupt your, um, your A, your, your, your ability to be hungry or mm -hmm. satiated, should I say, and B, your ability to actually select food that nourishes you yes. as opposed to going for those sugary, uh, high, uh, you know, high fat kind of foods that are going to feel like you're in survival mode. You know, 
And you mate, you, you, you mentioned evolution before, and I think, you know, you and I, whenever we catch up for coffee, you know, um, evolution, ironically enough, speaking about sleep, um, every time, you know, we talk about these things, you and I are both very fascinated into the reasons why, why would that be the case? Why would be, why would, why would our metabolism slow down? You know, the less sleep we have, why, why would these, the, these hormones be secreted, you know, in response to, to a lack of sleep and so forth. And, uh, you know, if you think about it, if you're not getting enough sleep from an evolutionary perspective, your body's saying, Hey, why do we need to be on here? What the hell's going on? Did you hear a sound out there? And is there a pack of wolves? Is there a local tribe that's trying to take all our, our resources? Yes. So you think about slowing the metabolism down, looking for uh, more sugary foods with a higher glucose content, your body is in a survival state because you've taken yourself out of a rest and digest state. So it makes perfect sense. It, it completely and utterly does. And, and, and you're spot on, you know, it's like evolution's way of just trying to keep you alive for that, that short term period. So, yep. uh, uh, you know, l long story short, uh, you know, sleep is a pretty important thing. And I attribute it to, you know, the 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 health the the tide that rises all other health boats yes um if somebody comes to me uh, and is in a state of poor health and they want to know about all the one percenters they want to know about what kind of keto diet or you know uh, uh what you know vegan or um carnivore or this or that whatever it might be it's like Forget about all that stuff. If you're sleeping four hours a night, let's address that because yeah. I'll tell you right now, not one single ounce of vegetable or <laughs> is going to save you. You need to be able to address the simple things before you get into the minutia. And I couldn't think of anything more foundational and simple than sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, look, bef before we even get into the nitty gritties, I mean, it's the low hanging fruit, isn't it? You know, what, what you and I have seen from a high performance, high performance perspective, um, both on the mental side and the physical side is that, you know, l l let's go back to our, 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 our years coaching together, right? Hey, what, what supplements do you take? What, what, what program do you follow for strength? When the program, what small lot are you doing that for your squatting program? What, what's your ab routine like? What's your mm -hmm. mobility training like, you know, okay. and a mentor said to me once, uh, he said, um, you can have the best program in the world, but if you don't come into the gym, you're not going to get any results. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's the simple things. And then you build like a pyramid. Wow. Okay. So, you know, as a little tangent, you're going to the gym five times a week. Amazing. How, what's that like for you? Okay, cool. Now we can work in a bit of flexibility. Now mm -hmm. we can have a look at your sleep. Now we can have a look at, at your diet, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. be worrying about supplements and vegetables to uh, increase melatonin levels and so forth until you've just got a good routine. 100%. And you, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's like the habits are the blanket and the the arm that we, we need to use to be able to fire the gun or hammer the nail. You know, if you mm. don't have that arm working well, then all the... All, all this minutia is meaningless. You need to know how to actually apply these things. So but back to sleep. I mean, like, you know, learning how to apply sleep seems very simple, right? You yes. get, close your eyes and you're done. But l let me tell you right now in the world that we live in, it's actually a lot more complicated than it feels. And it wasn't, but it is now. Once upon a time before, uh, you know, a guy around 1900 of Venezuela. <laughs> Um, we, we rose with the sun and we, we, we pretty much started winding down when the sun went down, but now with the advent of, uh, you know, man-made electricity, light bulbs, um, we are pretty much guided. We, and we are engineering our own circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. And th this is, this is a big deal. It's obviously a big deal for productivity in the, in the modern world that we live in, in the industrial world that we live in. However, it's also a really big deal for our health habits and yeah. what, um, what, what we've done uh, in this sense as well, because we can't control ourselves. We don't appreciate that, when the sun goes down, we need to start winding down. Yes. When the sun comes up, we need to appreciate that actually being in contact with the sun sets a stamp. It almost um, 
creates a, a dance with our human biology to say, right, it's time to start raising our elevated levels of um, of cortisol. Yeah. It starts to make us more productive. It starts to bring our focus up. And during that first phase of the day, not only does it make us more productive, but it sends a signal to our body then to when the sun comes down for us, like that tide rises, it needs to fall when the sun comes down. Mm. I mean, you're absolutely right. You know, when I mean, you think about this concept, it sounds weird, doesn't it? But midnight means middle of the night. And yet for most of us, that's when we're kind of still uh, on the screens and everything. So it's, it's crazy. But I think, um, so, so let, let's get right into it then, mate. What would you say? So someone comes to you and says, my sleep's off as a result, you know, anxiety is very high. Um, you know, let's, let's just squash that myth for a second here that, you know, you're the only one for most of us, Paulie and I included, if our sleeping is off, our anxiety is going to be high, of course, but someone who comes to you and says, you know, give me, give me three things to really optimize my sleep. What, what would you hit them with? So the first thing I would say is the, the use of light. I just touched on it earlier. To yep. be able to uh, be in direct contact with the actual naked light that the the sun permit, uh, omits um, out. So if you are waking up, I don't know, let's call it between 6 and 7 a.m., the sun is most likely going to be out. If you can step outside for just five minutes, either go for a walk, but be in direct contact with that sun, even gaze towards the sun, if the sun, and I, I feel like I need to say this, if the sun is hurting your eyes, don't... <laughs> just, a, just a disclaimer here. <laughs> just a, a simple disclaimer. I don't, you know, I, I didn't think it was necessary to say. <laughs> Let, let's let's go ahead and, and say Health it. guru prescribes blindness. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Do not blind yourself. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, so th that that's one thing. And like I said, as the sun uh, begins to set gaze at the sunset as well because nice. what it does is that sends a signal to your body that melatonin uh, that, that so your um your cortisol is rise, risen in the uh in the morning and that's when you want it to be at its highest right and then it starts to slowly kind of deplete or decelerate so to speak and come down and then as the sun sets what happens is, is your melatonin and your serotonin begin to rise. And these are these rest and relax kind of hormones. And they put you into a state where you can start um, to have a restful and restorative night's sleep for your body, for your hormones, for your brain. And um, the problem with modern technology is, is we're watching Netflix where at the same time as um, being, you know, doing work on our uh, laptops at the same time as being yeah. in iPhones, right? So at the same time as having overhead fluoro lights beaming. So yes. uh, the, the other thing I would suggest is in terms of light is reduce all of the lights uh, if you can in your house, be as close as you can to living in a cave, yeah, uh, exactly. you know, uh, without, you know, really pissing off your partner. Uh, totally. And, and um, you know, I'm not going to tell you to, because I don't do it. I, I don't say don't stop watching TV because it's a, it, for me, it's a lovely thing to be able to do to, uh, to wind down and uh, watch some TV after a long day. Um, so I do that, but that's, that's one thing. And I can mm. touch on another thing. Do, do you have anything to add there, Tommy? Yeah. Well, I mean, I love, so one thing that we do just from personal experience is we wear blue light blockers every night and we, we, we've changed the light bulbs from blue light to red light, mm. um, which, which, I mean, sometimes I find myself just, you know, um, not wearing, I mean, I actually read at night, most nights, um, except funnily enough, we watched Meet the Parents last night on Netflix. That was fun. Um, but so when I'm watching a screen, I'll, I'll wear my blue lights. Um, and this, this might sound, you know, really extreme to someone who's just tuning on the first day. And by all means, this was exactly where I was when I first started listening to um, optimization and biohacking, which is kind of the colloquialism for it. Um, it's actually more kind of bio integration though, because you can't hack your own DNA. You can just work with it. Um, so if it sounds a bit too extreme as a, as a simple thing, what I would do is just buy some blue light blockers. I just bought them in office works. They were $18 and just, and they're, they're amazing what they do. But the, the other thing that I wanted to touch on as perhaps a second point is, 
when you're trying to fall asleep, or let's say you're someone who can't fall asleep easily, not only is light a determining factor um, or associated with sleep quality and duration, but also context change. And we're very, very um, uh, triggered, technically speaking, by, I mean, you think about TikTok as, as an example, you scroll and all of a sudden it's a completely new landscape, completely new person, um, you know, red letters and words for biological signaling because we're very triggered by this, the color of red for obvious reasons. Um, all these things are going to keep you alert and awake because your 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 brain is saying, "Pay attention, paying attention." Is this going to kill me? Is this going to hurt me? Um, so engaging in practices as well that mm. get, that bring you into that state of relaxation, a lovely conversation with you with your loved one, whatever it is. I think it's also worth mentioning that light. Um, looking at light, to your point, is. Um, Am I right in saying that the cortisol spike actually occurs from blue light directly hitting your eyes as opposed to just being in that space? No, no, yeah, it's uh, it's actually, so, uh, which is spot on. That's why you shouldn't be wearing sunglasses when you're uh, um, when you're going for this walk because, uh, yeah, it's the optical nerve that actually uh, responds to this blue light. So, yep. uh, and, and another thing I'll say is, um, to that point is you're you're going to have to get 50 times as much light if you're inside through a window as well. So um, because of the light being refracted through uh, the, the actual windows themselves, so you do need to be bare out naked towards the actual sun itself. So, yes, mm. the... Um, uh, the, the absorption does come through the eye and then it starts moving through the, the entire biology. Yep. 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 Well, so before we, before we move on, I really like that. So we've got three things for someone who's, who's new to sleep, but wants to optimize their sleep. We've got um, direct contact with, with the sun in the morning, mm -hmm. um, which I think is also, I mean, a lovely little segue there is also movement in the morning, light movement in the morning. Again, you're kind of working to increase <coughs> and spike that cortisol. So as you, as you said, it starts to wind down into a nice routine and then um, blue light blockers at night. Um, yep. What do you think? Yeah, no, that's great. And just to 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 the movement and the uh, the understanding of exercise, that starts to heat up your system as well. So as we wake up, we want to actually be heating up our system uh, because that's going to start to uh, increase that cortisol, that adrenaline that's going to start increasing uh, our ability to be productive. Mm. Uh, likewise, uh, when... so a couple of tools that you can use for that is having a cold shower. Nice. Now, a lot of people do think that if you're having a cold shower, you're cooling down your body. But if you're just having that cold shower for a short period of time, what's happening is, is your, uh, your, uh, the, the heat or the blood, should I say, in your body is coming to the surface, to your skin, and the core of your body is actually heating up. Mm. So, uh, your body acts as like a thermostat, so to speak. So when the cold is there, your body is going to be heating up. So that's something to consider as well. But when we're going to sleep at night, conversely, a really, really nice thing to be able to do is have a hot shower, a warm bath, so your core can cool down. Dude, we we could do a whole uh, podcast on um, uh, regulation and homeostasis. I think that would be a really good one. Um, mm. It's... Uh... It's spot on. Mate, I think we'd be remiss not to talk about coffee if we're talking about sleep. Right. Oh, um, and it's, it's coffee. It's, oh, God, it's so good. I, uh, <laughs> I had one this morning. I'm, I'm normally one a day, but if I'm getting a little excited, um, I'll have a second and I'll just just uh, pump some workout after that. I've, I've actually, I'm in, a, um, I'm in a bit of a habit at the moment of training um, kind of around 12, 1. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, They've got a cafe just at the gym. So I'll just get a little double espresso and I'm just wired and I'm ready to go. I and, uh, it's so good. It's so good. But yes, we should speak about coffee. Um, <clears> what <throat> it does to the adenosine receptors. We don't have to get to the nitty gritty, but basically when should people, um, actually 
how about we how how about we just squash a myth very quickly? Um, someone comes along to you and says, you know what, I can have a coffee um, at like nine or ten. I can fall asleep right away, so it doesn't affect me. What yeah. what would you say in a loving way? Of course, we love you all very much. <laughs> yeah, um, like well, you. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Well, one thing I will say is that there, from what I I understand, there are some people that respond very differently to caffeine. Uh, intake than others right there is the 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 great majority of people is in the class that I put myself in but I feel that no matter what if you're an outlier and you feel like caffeine doesn't affect you as much as others that's that's one thing but absolutely everyone is going to be affected if you have a double espresso at 10 before uh, after your dinner just before you go to bed um so you mentioned the adenosine respect receptors in your body that but just just really really briefly that that appears to be a chemical in in your body that uh is released as soon as you wake up and what that does is that inhibits your ability to uh stay awake so what that does is that slowly begins to elevate as you you wake up um, and it gets to that that height in the evening, right? So yep. what it does is that inhibits that um, that receptor. So what we want to be able to do is uh, th- there's some school of thoughts out there that says if you wait for say 60 to 90 minutes, after you wake up to allow your body to actually do its thing naturally, mm. then have your first coffee. That's going to be a really, really great thing for your ability to then fall asleep at night. Mm. I get, and I understand. And if you're able to do that, that's, that's a wonderful thing. Of course. Yes. But coffee tends to have uh, just back to what you were saying, coffee tends to have a half life of say, um, I think it's about four to five hours at a quarter life of about eight to or 10 to 12 hours. So it might be five to six hours. Now, if yep. you're having a- can you, can you just quickly elaborate on what you mean by that, mate? Just for people who don't know half yeah. life. Yep. So uh, you have a, a single coffee or a, a, let, let's say you have an espresso, right? And everything that it is doing. So if, it, if it's inhibiting these adenosine receptors, which is keeping you awake, right? If you have that at five o'clock in the afternoon, right? And the chemicals that it has um, produced in your body, it's going to take another five hours for that. Five hours after you have that, half of the chemicals that are going on inside of your body are still taking place Mm. in your body. Yep. 10 hours after a quarter of those chemicals are still taking place. That's what, yep. that's what the half-life versus a quarter life basically means the, um, the potency that the right. chemical have in your body. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still 50% active with what it was doing um, when you took it. Um, Correct. Which is insane because, you know, to your point, if you're having a double espresso at 10 PM, four or five hours after that, still it's blocking those adenosine receptors from allowing you to really dive into a nice sleep. Exactly. And th- that, that's where it's at. It's all about this nice restorative sleep. So to your, to your, um, your, your fictitious person saying, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I can have a, a coffee at 10 o'clock at night and not have to worry at all. Well, you may be getting to sleep, but the, the, the question that I have to ask you is, is what kind of quality of sleep are you having? Right. Are you getting the restorative sleep that you need? Mm. Do you wake up refreshed? Do you wake up feeling like and um you know go again and and feel like you can take on that day again yes because my my thoughts are and um i feel like countless hundreds of studies would would back me up on this saying that you know you're going to be much you're going to be in a much more advantageous position not having coffee 10 hours before you go to sleep yeah than having coffee and I'm not against coffee. I told you, I freaking love the stuff. It's good. If, if I could, if I had room in my house, I'd have a shrine to the thing. In fact, I do. I've got my own little <laughs> cup of bean and I have my ritual every morning when so, I wake up and it's just a beautiful thing. You, but, got, your, you got your IV drip in the, in the corner. <laughs> absolutely. But I don't have coffee after uh, a certain amount yeah. of time in the day. Like I pretty much cut myself off at 12 o'clock. 12, okay. 
I might have two coffees in the day, uh, but 12 o'clock, like I'm going out for a, a meeting after this and it's a coffee meeting. Uh, it won't be until 1.30 that I sit down and have a coffee. I just know I'm ordering a decaf. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, the amount of other benefits that you get from coffee are really worth drinking coffee. Like yes. even with a decaf, you can still, and you know, like decaf is not coffee, coffee, but you can still taste quite a bit like, um, it, it can still be really good is what I'm trying to say. Yes. And the benefits that you receive, like the ac antioxidant uh, benefits that you get from coffee um, still come through when it comes to uh, decaf coffee as well. And I think the dopamine increase as well. I think it kind of coffee has an, an ability to increase dopamine from tonic baseline. Now I've just read dopamine nation. So this is, this is mm -hmm. in my head, um, but it's about 1.5 from baseline. The important, the, the major takeaway I took away from that book was that dopamine is this, this, this balance of pleasure pain. So both the pleasure center and the, the pain center actually co-occur in the same area of the brain. Mm. So what you have to make sure of is you recognize that when you're doing something that's in layman's terms, exciting or rewarding or motivating, you're going to experience a um, proportional increase in pain when that starts to fall down okay and this is what the word craving means so if you smoke methamphetamine and you have an insane time you know you're going to experience the exact same amount of pain relatively speaking when you come down from that okay so it's important to really kind of take a bit of discipline or just foresight and just regulate that yourself mm. and um it's hard i mean i've 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 had to give up coffee um, you know, um, for, for weeks before, because I just need to keep it in check, you know, my, my body needs to regulate itself, but that that's obviously for another conversation, but coming back to sleep, um, just to, just to bring everyone up to speed so far, we've got three and a half tips really here. It's first things absolutely, as you mentioned, Paul, it's getting light early in the morning, as soon as you wake up you know, um, without being too puritanical about it, movement as well, you know, so we're doing things to activate um, and increase cortisol levels to get your body primed for that circadian rhythm in the morning. Hey, this is what I do in the morning. So it speaks to a routine, I suppose. Three, it's blue light blockers, or it's just dampening the lights at night, you know, doing things that are that are less, um, are less alerting, I suppose. Um, and, um, and then when you're speaking about coffee, cause we have to speak about coffee, Co coffee is wonderful. You know, Paulie and I both love it. I, I think before 12 is a really good call. That's, um, that's something that I certainly try to work to towards as well, just before 12. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and to your point, mate, um, before I finish up here for, for those who say it, it doesn't affect them. Um, you know, we're, we're not having a go against you, but what we are saying is, um, be open-minded find out what your sleep is like after 14 days of not doing it and see how you feel. It might be worse, might be better, but um, you'll, you'll gain greater perspective. Well, I'll, I'll share a story uh, with a friend who, uh, you know, was one of those people that said, you know, I drink coffee through into the afternoon and it just doesn't seem to affect me. It doesn't seem to have a great impact on me. So I sent him some science, uh, some literature about it. Um, and I said, just check this out, um, see what you think and uh, give it a go. Just try, try not. And he saw it, he read it and he's like, great, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to have coffee. Um, and he sent me a message the next day saying, I have, ne I have not had such a restful sleep uh, Whoa. in my life. Okay. That was a one-off. Yeah. B was uh, also could have been psychosomatic given sure. being given the literature. But the reality is, is the literature is out there because the studies back it up. Right. So, it's a scientific reality. And also don't smoke meth 10 hours before you uh, right. <laughs> Exactly. I'm not sure what the half-life is there. No, the half-life of meth. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. We'll we'll have to we'll have to put the uh this this the science in the show notes there. But um but you you're right. I mean, you know, it, with when 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 someone is saying coffee doesn't affect me, what that might be speaking to is in fact that your body is so used to it that you actually need to have coffee just to bring those dopamine levels up to baseline, because that's what happens when we start, this is obviously called tolerance. You yeah. know, when we are so used to an exogenous chemical, we need it just to feel normal. Yeah. Um, you know, so try 30 days without it and see if it, see if it feels like meth. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 
Absolutely. Well, that's a, that's a really good kind of uh, point to, um, to finish off on. <laughs> I feel like um, that's a solid toolkit for you guys to take away. And should you uh, feel like experimenting with one or some or even all of them, go for it because it doesn't take much time to um, to integrate into your life. And not only will you sleep better at night, but your mental health, you'll realize, will take a massive, massive boost. Your physical health will take a massive boost. Your vitality, your mm -hmm. ability to, um, if your objective is to lose weight or athletic performance um, will definitely be achieved at a greater rate. Because as I mentioned before, sleep is the tide that rises all other health boats. Yeah, I love that, man. That's awesome. Um, beautiful. Paulie, you're a legend, mate. Love you very much. Uh, looking forward to next week. Thank you, Tommy. I consider these times very, very, very grateful for them, mate. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Peace. Thanks, guys.